All right, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and start advanced Photoshop. All right, advanced Photoshop. So some of the things I want you guys to pay attention to as we go through a lot of these examples is ask yourself when you're looking at the images is what, what are kind of the giveaways that the image uh, is fake? Uh, what makes it real? What makes it fake? I know this kind of goes back to the email that you sent me about how can you spot uh, how can you spot a fake photo or you know Photoshop image? Um, every image we look at today will of course will, will be fake, and you'll notice that. Okay, but the the main goal is what makes it realistic. Okay, what makes it out of you know quote unquote out of this world? Um, so if you can imagine it being real, what are some of the things that contribute to that? Um, usually the the biggest uh, giveaway when I'm looking at an image is the lighting okay so when you're splicing images there are several things a lot all of which we'll talk about here in a few minutes uh, but there are a lot of dead giveaways in terms of uh, you know what kind of adds a, a, a false sense of realism to to the image okay it's fun to create these out of these you know out of these world images and they're all clearly will be fake but what you know what ultimately lends a good hand to making them look real, okay? So I'll talk about probably 15, 20 of these images. I'll skip through the rest of them, but I'll kind of let you guys, you know, gander at them and, and ask yourself that those questions. But try to figure out, you know, if you were to create this image, what are some things that you might ultimately focus on to make them look a little bit better? So uh, some of these will be really clever uh, and really interesting. Some of them will be a little weird. Uh, there's, there's no way around that, but I'll just throw that out now. So the first probably about 30 images, these are all professional examples. So they're not necessarily examples that I expect out of everyone here, but they're all certainly obtainable. Uh, I would love for you guys to all try to be able to produce a lot of the images that we're looking at. And probably about the last 20 examples, whoops, about the last 20 examples, will be student images that were actually created in this class. So I'll actually point those out once we transition. So here's our first one. This is actually a, a splice of two different images that that a person created, okay? So here's another one. This one actually is, now that I, there actually is, a, there's a little bit of a jumble between the slides, but uh, this actually is a student image that was created in this class. I think the one after this will not be, but. Um, but just looking at this, what, I mean, obviously we know feet don't come out of trees, but if we were to try to, you know, imagine this being real, if we were watching a movie, for example, and maybe a tree uprooted out of the ground and started walking through the forest, what are some things that might help this um, have a little bit extra realism to it? Yes. Shadows, yeah, shadows. So usually lighting and shadows is the biggest giveaway on what makes something real, okay? If you have, so a couple things to pay attention to, so in, and we'll start to look at multiple images today, is pay attention to the lighting in both of the images that you're gonna combine, okay? If you have one image, for example, where the lighting is coming from one side of the image, and then you splice another image into it where the lighting is coming from the other side, It'll be kind of a, it'll be an instant giveaway in terms of, of the fact that that's fake, okay? So pay attention to lighting in a lot of these images today. Um, and shadows, okay? Ultimately, shadows a direct effect of, or a direct result of the lighting in the images, okay? So pay attention to how the shadows uh, start to align with the images that we look today. So some of the dead giveaways for me on this, although it's a really interesting image and you know, it starts to, you know, spark my curiosity a little bit. But if I look at the tree and how it starts to blend in with the feet, there's a very kind of seamless transition. Uh, actually, I would say it's not super seamless, but there's kind of an awkward transition between the, the toe and the trunk. And you'll notice in a couple of these other images where it starts to really fade or the gradient between what you see is um, not quite as crisp. But for me, it kind of looks like they maybe took the eraser and just kind of traced along the edges and there's not so much of a blend of the wood and, and the foot. But overall, it's pretty good. You know, great, great, uh, great attempt. 
you know, I would actually be you know really happy if a lot of us could do that or could do this by the end of this week. So anything else that you notice on this? No, I'd say those are probably the two dead, you know, the two biggest giveaways is probably the lighting and uh, how they masked around the toes. So this is a really popular example of what I, I see. There's at least a couple people every class that do something like this. And by all means, when you guys are creating your images for assignment two, feel free to reference the, uh, the lecture. Feel free to go online and look for examples. Um, don't try to always, you know, it's great if you can come up with a, you know, something really clever on your own, but every great artist you know, looks at other examples to kind of spark some inspiration and to spark some creativity. So uh, feel free to look at examples online. Feel free to look at the lecture when you guys are doing something. But how do we think this was created? Actually, a pretty easy one. Every, everyone here could for sure do this by the end of this week, I think. Yes? Uh, they took two pictures, one with the young guy sitting in, sitting in front of the mirror and then from the same angle, and the old guy standing in front of the mirror, and then Photoshop the Exactly. So we had someone standing in the mirror. So this guy, there was probably an image where it showed him in the mirror. And then with a camera likely on a tripod taking the exact same perspective, uh, they simply swapped places. The old man, maybe that's the, it's the older version of himself, maybe. Uh, all they did was simply mask out the mirror and swap and swap those out. But what works really well for that is that the two images were taking under the same lighting conditions. So it looks very real, okay? The lighting conditions of what you see in the mirror are the, are the same as the lighting conditions uh, on the outside of the mirror, okay? So that works, that works really well and everyone here could, could definitely do that. A lot of what lends to that is you know, having a good camera and thinking about how you actually process those images. So just taking a few extra moments to maybe set it up on a tripod or place the camera in a location to where it's not going to move will, you know, lend a big hand on creating a successful image. So this is kind of a creepy one, but there are certain elements to this that actually give it some realistic qualities. Uh, what are some of those? Guesses, guesses. The, the shading of the flesh is the same. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm guessing that the images were probably pulled from the same person, so that ultimately helps. Um, so the shading of the skin is very much the same. They've actually applied shadows uh, on the edge of the nose that corresponds with the shadows on the edges of the fingers, on the shadows on the edges of the thumb. Uh, there's a nice gradient to the shadows, so it actually looks somewhat real. So if we were to kind of imagine something creepy like this actually happening. Uh, there, you know, there are a lot of realistic qualities in terms of, of how this works. There's actually some nice blending between the skin and you know, the eye sockets below the knuckles. So there is some stuff that actually looks you know, somewhat real on this, on this hand, okay? Interesting one, this was actually done in this class. Yeah, so these are all these are all examples of. I'm guessing this one, although this student was in my wasn't in my class, probably started out with the pot. Maybe the pot maybe had some uh, some leaves on it. They inserted a hand to which they inserted multiple other smaller versions of what was originally here. So um, ultimately, what was focused on most was the blending of the different shapes and the shadows of the different shapes and the lighting. Here's another really good one. So what is something that we've done this semester that might be kind of the starting point of creating something like this? Like yeah, exactly. So I wouldn't say it's quite you know exactly that easy, but that's certainly the start of how this was created. Um, another more challenging aspect of this is you'll notice that the grunge image was probably applied to in some form of a gradient. You'll notice that at the top of the shoe, that's all leather. Well, that's just the shoe right there. But as you get closer down to where your toes are beneath the shoe, you start to reveal more and more of the toes. So, but yes, that, that's really exactly what it is. It is it all started out with a grunge image. And they went through that exact same process and they masked out uh, the background behind the shoes and uh, add a little bit of a shadow as if there was maybe you know some white canvas or something on the other side so 
Um, I wouldn't say this is super easy, but it's probably not as challenging as, as you might think. If you think about the process, the different uh, adjustments and the different processes that we've learned so far, you can probably create some form of a combination of those to get to this result. Okay? Here's a mannequin with uh, a little plant coming out of it. Not too hard, just cutting a mannequin in half. They probably had to create the back portion of this in Photoshop. And they added a tree and they added a little bit of dirt. That's other than that, there's there was not a whole lot more to that. Okay? This is one of my favorites. This is this is uh, very well done. They you know, as much as we this is clearly fake and we know that faces don't come out of trees, but there are a lot of really good aspects of this that make make it look real. Okay. They've done some really nice dodge and burning on the edges to actually kind of get some depth to to the face, okay? You can see the burn tool is probably applied over here to allow there to be kind of some texture and some depth to the face kind of popping out. And the dodge tool is probably used on the forehead to mimic the shadows that you also see on the leaf. So very well done. And also there's probably some fashion of a grunge image in this. You can see that you know the the leaf was probably applied on top of the face to ultimately kind of get some of that texture from the leaf on the face so you can see have a lot of kind of the basics of what we've started in this class implemented on that last image um, something to kind of point out for this particular image notice that they kind of ghosted uh, the background of the image um, pretty clever effect it's they didn't necessarily have to do that but what it actually kind of does is it kind of screens some of the, dis the, the, the um, you know, some of the maybe the, the rough edges of cutting out the, the puzzle piece. So kind of blurring that will, uh, will kind of blur some of those lines a little bit. And it actually allows you to focus on the more important thing, which is the puzzle piece that was cut out of the, of the face. So um, how, how do we think this might have been created? If we were to break it down into a two or three step process, someone that hasn't hasn't answered yet. Anybody have an idea? How about in the back? Take your best guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty close, exactly. Um, so they probably started with the image of a puzzle piece. Okay, they took. There's probably a sequence of, I'd guess, of about three or four steps to create this. But I would guess they probably started with the image of the puzzle piece. They overlaid that over the face of the person. They masked around it, simply just filled it in black. Okay, they faded the background image, and then they someone took a picture of them holding that puzzle piece. <laughs> Uh, and then overlay that on top of the original image and then just masked the back image on the puzzle piece. So it's two images. It's just an image of the person and an image of the puzzle piece. And they just kind of mat, you know, various layers of masking and, and you have what you see here. So a lot of it is just uh, one, finding the correct images, but just thinking of the process and the different steps that's needed to get to your end result. So, uh, I might suggest as you guys are thinking of your out of this world image is create kind of a little bit of a bubble diagram, if you will, of, of the steps that's needed to create what it is that you're looking for. Um, it, sometimes it can be a little hard to kind of break that down, even for myself. So it just takes a little practice, though. Here's another good one. If you have to cut your finger to get this effect, don't do that. <laughs> Maybe, the only reason why I think this one might be okay is if maybe he already accidentally cut his finger, even though I'm, I'm guessing that probably wasn't the case. But the, he could have also photoshopped the cut on his finger. So I'm hoping that's what he actually did. And I'm guessing that's what he did. But don't inflict any pain on yourself to create your image. So let's look at this one. Let's kind of break this one down a little bit to why this works, why this doesn't work. So we got some hands, we got some arms coming out of this toilet. Hopefully we never find ourselves in this position. 
I don't think it's physically possible unless you're a really, really small person. But uh, what are some giveaways that, uh, you know, that kind of makes it look like this might be photoshopped? I could see some really good, some really good ones, some really good masking, but I could see a few things that could have been done just a little bit better that might have added some realism to it. Yep. The proportions of the arms, they don't look like they're coming from the spots. Like, okay, so they're coming out of the toilet, but even more so, especially considering one of the hands is kind of a lot lower down. Um, and they're, where they're positioned makes it seem like they're not part of the same body. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it kind of makes it seem a little bit less realistic. Sure, I can agree with that. Anything else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. That's probably my that's what probably comes to mind for me the most is there are some really good shadows under the hand. I'm guessing they probably added them in Photoshop, but the fingers kind of overlap the crisp white bowl just a little bit too well. Uh, is there would probably be a little bit of shadow and a little bit of uh, gradient to that shadow around the fingers. So yeah, I'd say that's probably a giveaway. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. I'm guessing the lighting's coming from above. So you probably have a little bit of shadow on the walls as well. Anything else? That's probably majority of it for that image. How do we think we got to the end result of this image? We've already talked about it a little bit. I don't think this one would be too hard. We could, most of us in this class could probably do it. Any ideas? Here's another good example of, uh, of a grunge image and also you know, the picture of the eyeball. Um, something that also lends a really good, you know, a big part of this is probably the really good camera that was used to take it. If you have a really grainy photograph, a lot of the times the graininess of the photograph can be really distracting to, you know, kind of the end result of what you're trying to accomplish. So for this one, for a far away image, it might not be as distracting, but for something like this where the little details are really important, that lends to the importance. But uh, yes, it's just a matter of overlaying the, the mud over the eyeball and applying a grunge texture to it or going through that grunge texture process and uh, a little, little bit of masking around the eyeball and you can you could get the end results pretty pretty easily. I'd say probably the hardest part of this was probably masking out the eyelashes. That's a little challenging. It probably was a little tedious too. But a lot of times those little tiny tedious effects and details is what ultimately lends to the, the greatest realism of the photo. So I guarantee you, you will run across times where you're like, oh gosh, I could see what really needs to uh, be done to make this look real, but it might take those real tedious, just, you know, kind of masking out the little tiny areas, but sometimes that's what's needed to create a really interesting and fun photo. Let's break this one down a little bit. Everyone, I think everyone here could do this one too. How do we think we got to, to this end result? We got some feet coming out of the bottom of the pants, but the pants, the top of the pants is missing a person. I'd probably guess that they originally started out with taking a picture of their feet or somebody took a picture of their feet. Then they probably stepped out of their pants and took the, you know, probably positioned the pants in a fashion that look like maybe they just kind of drop down and that's really about it there's probably a splice here that you just barely don't see right underneath here maybe even right over the feet uh, where they just overlaid the uh, the feet in the bottom of the pants but pretty easy it's probably just about two images yeah now they're really interesting this is probably a little bit more on the challenging side as there's kind of some warping of the skin going on as well, but all, all doable. We'll talk about the transform tool, I think a little bit next class. This is a popular one and kind of kind of an easy one. I get a couple students um, every semester do something similar to this. It's kind of a, it's the idea of kind of miniature people or miniature things, okay? So it's really easy to adjust scale inside Photoshop. So uh, here's an image of a, you know, a cat looking for this little, I don't know, superhero maybe. But there's a lot of things, there's a couple things that look a little fake to me, other than the fact that she's smaller than a coffee cup, but um, there's a couple things that look a little fake to me. What, anybody have an idea of what that might be? Yeah. The shadows on her upper body are cast onto the cup, but her lower body is 
Exactly. That's that's definitely. I think the shadows are are not quite at the right angle. So if you look at the cup, there's a really nice gradient of the shadow on the cup. Her shadow is a much 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 darker than the shadows of the cup. There's some really really crisp lines to the shadow too, so it's really sharp and rigid. Whereas a lot of the shadows in the scene are not so much, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's probably, it's still really well done. I'd be super impressed if you came up with this, but um, just things to think about when you guys are going through your images. It's, it's always the little tiny details that all add up to making a really successful image. It's kind of goofy, always kind of makes me laugh, but actually done pretty well. There's actually a pretty good blend between the feet and the skin and the shadows and you know what kind of start to form as the lips of the mouth on the bottom of the foot. Pretty well done, kind of funny. This one's very similar to the, the man looking into the mirror. The idea of the kitten looking into the reflection and thinking that the kitten's gonna be Simba someday. Or is that Mufasa? I forget, I haven't seen Lion King in a long time. Mufasa? I can't, Mufasa's the dad, right? Or is Mufasa the bad, the bad one? Mufasa's the bad guy? Jeez. I've actually just thought about, I don't have kids yet, but it could, could happen in the next couple years. I need to accumulate the, the Disney movies. My kids, are, my kids, I feel like the younger generation is gonna miss out on all the good Disney movies. They cost an absolute fortune, I can tell you that. Disney's like, oh, we're gonna unlock the vault, we're gonna give you Lion King, but it's gonna cost you $75 to buy the DVD. My mom actually had all mine, and my, and my garage was broken into, like, my mom's garage was broken into, like, five years ago. Stole all my Disney VHS tapes. Yeah, that was probably their biggest jackpot of everything else they found in there. Another kind of funny one. Definitely a little out of this world, unless the little boy has superhuman strength. But pretty clever. A matter of taking a couple different photos, masking two different people, and uh, shadows are done correctly, and... Pretty fun. This is a tough one. This would be really challenging. To be honest, I don't think I could even I could do that. Maybe with the with enough time. Like yeah. <laughs> but very clever. Really, really interesting. Baby coming out of the mom. I'm sure all moms wish it was that easy. All right, just coming out. I'm like a Humpty Dumpty egg. Kind of funny and clever. Yeah. Nobody would want to eat that though. Gosh, mice, mice, no matter how cute they might look. I hate mice. I actually had someone try to mimic this one last semester. This was a, this was a fun one. Um, definitely started out with, I think it started out with just this image with a little island on it and they actually masked the giant fish, did the shadows really well underwater. And really just the blend of the rock and the fish is just kind of a, kind of a grunge image, you know, kind of a partial grunge image. Okay, just blending that texture really nicely. So, pretty doable with enough time. This is a tough one and it, it would involve breaking a vase. You guys don't have to break a vase for your assignment, unless you really have a vase that you don't like. This is a good one, another example of kind of the miniature scale, but done, done good or done well. So you got this little tiny person walking with a giant guitar pick. Power lines are coming out of the guitar. But pretty cool, pretty clever. Very similar to the original, the other pants one that we just did. This was probably a series of what I guess is maybe three photographs. Can anybody spot what those three photographs might be? Yes. Uh, him sitting on the table with his, his legs down. Yep, I think so. Yeah, exactly. I think there was probably one of him sitting on, I don't know if you could actually sit on that, it looks kind of flimsy, but he somehow got up there and took a picture of him in that correct angle, in that correct position, uh, with his feet dangling down. Yep, one with probably the, uh, with the pants just sitting on the ironing board and one with him ironing from behind. So, series of three images, but very doable. These are all start to get Pretty cool, pretty interesting. I'm just kind of sharing them because they're they're very clever.
Pro these were probably a part of my, a marketing campaign at some point. Kind of a mixed dimension, mixed reality. Ice cream cone melting. Now, what's what's as as much as I love this image, what's the dead giveaway? This is that this is fake, or what's what's something that I think could have been done a little bit better? The ice cream cone's not even melting. It's kind of, I mean, I guess if the idea is that the arm is melting and not the ice cream cone, but it's kind of funny. If it's really hot out and the arm is melting, the popsicle or the ice cream is still very intact. I don't know. Still very successful, though. Very clever. What dreams are made of. This is definitely very doable. I don't think this would be too hard. This is just a black and white image with, uh, you know, masking out maybe uh, some kind of a texture, some kind of a grunge image over a, a specific masked area. So as we talk about masking today, keep in mind that as you are creating your masks, you can also, you know, drop images into those selection areas too. So this probably started out as a black and white image. They probably made a selection of this area right here. Uh, and then ultimately dropped in that mask into that selection. They could have also dropped it or masked it over the entire uh, boardwalk and then they could have maybe removed a portion of it as well. So a lot of times you'll learn that there are usually several ways to get to the end result. There's not always a correct way, but you can usually you can get there several different ways. It's kind of a funny one. I'm gonna go through the rest of these kind of kind of quickly. How do we think we got to this this final image? This is a guy, I'm guessing, laying on a beach. Maybe he turned into stone. Any ideas? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Pretty easy, just masking a series of two, probably two images. So I think we could, I think everyone here could probably do something like that. Probably some good shading and some good shadowing to probably add to the effect of the stone and it kind of being a little rough. Looks a little funky over the hair. I, I would have actually been really interested in maybe seeing the grunge texture applied over the over the the body and maybe letting the hair look a little bit more natural. That that right there looks you know, I would be curious to kind of be able to get that file and do that again. So the rest of these are all student images. You may have seen a few of these images before as we in maybe one of our original lectures. But these are all you know examples of things that you, you know, people in this class have definitely done, along with the, a few others that we've already looked at. I think we saw this on one of the one of our first lectures. The idea of the dog, the, the dog being masked into the rock, very clever. Kind of funny. Biting into a picture of this of this gal but you bite into her head and it's actually an apple kind of clever kind of creepy but well done I gotta say I, I would have given this person uh, an A I think you guys saw this one this is actually this is still one of my favorites this is one of the best this is some really fantastic blending between the flower and the uh, and the and the dress I see this probably at least every semester, uh, the idea of, of something kind of coming in. What I think would have made this a little bit better is if maybe the hand was actually on the outside of the frame, so it actually kind of looked like maybe it was going inside the image versus it being masked off at the edge. I kind of would have rather have seen that come off the, the edge, but this was done by someone in the class. The idea of a, of a sketched hand actually sketching a tattoo that was uh, on her back. So, pretty clever. Another example of the, you know, multiple images, people being removing themselves from 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 clothes. This is actually pretty this is actually pretty impressive. This was this was a series of a couple photographs. I'm guessing that shadow though probably wasn't really like that. We'll actually learn how to create shadows today and, and Wednesday as well in the in the class. Maybe maybe that's actually how the shadow was done. The shadow the light actually looks pretty intense in this photo. You can see that it's hitting the front of her pretty hard. So that could be real.
this is actually uh, this is probably my favorite of all the ones that we'll look at for the student work uh, but also very easy not I mean not not too hard in fact this is actually a composition of several grunge textures started out with the with the log then it was a very subtle image of the face that was uh, dropped into it probably had a really light transparency and then from there they probably added and masked kind of a, a, some additional texture into the areas that needed some some added depth and color to actually add some you know some a little bit more depth to the to the image but very well done kind of multiple dimensions but clever This person probably had, was watching The Walking Dead before doing that. Okay, that's it. So that's the end of the lecture. So hopefully that gave everyone a little bit of, of inspiration and hopefully kind of uh, spurred some creativity that will help you guys with your assignment. So to kind of to finish off the lecture, as you guys move into thinking of what you're going to do. So use probably the next three or four days to start thinking about what it is that you want to do. The assignment takes a little bit of planning. If you rush the process and you just kind of start creating something really quickly, it won't come out the way that you want it to, I promise. So think about how it's going to work. Think about the different steps. It might take a little time as it might take taking some new photographs. Uh, you know, really the process could be different for every person in the class. So. Think about it for a few days and on how you might achieve what it is that, that you want, okay? And I will, I'll be here to help you today if you're going to work on it today during lab. I can help you today. I can help you Wednesday and next Monday as well. So this will be due the following Wednesday. So you do have some time to create something really nice and, and creative, okay? So let's pause there. Let's take a 10-minute break. Let's come back at 7.25, and then we'll actually start to talk about how we would start to create these kind of images in Photoshop. Okay? So see you guys in 10 minutes.